Hi, you guys. It's Miss Kim with your Christmas story number five, I think. It's from a book called Stories That Sneak Up On You by John Duckworth. This is one of my favorite stories in here. It's not necessarily a children's story. It's just a good story that makes you think. Miss Kim likes those kind of stories. <clears throat> this is called Angels We Have Heard on High. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Young Pastor Torgensen, resplendent in the new three-piece charcoal gray suit his wife had given him, especially for this Christmas Eve service, mounted the platform. An ocean of faces looked back at him. The faces of the Red Ridge Community Church, holiday excited and ruddy from the cold outside. The pastor smiled for a second at his wife, who beamed from the first row. Then he began. Before the choir sings our anthem, Angels We Have Heard on High, he said, let me remind you of a scripture passage about angels. Turn with me to Hebrews 13.2, if you will. A tissue-thin shuffle of Bible pages went through the sanctuary like a rushing wind. Then it stopped. And as the pastor was about to read Hebrews 13.2, a murmur rose in the rear pews near the door. To the consternation of several older members, a shocking pair of visitors had entered. The man was tall, blonde, bushy-bearded, a near skeleton in a grimy navy peacoat. The girl was very, very pregnant, swathed in a shapeless beige peasant dress and a tattered sweater. A kerchief failed to conceal her stringy black hair. Wonder if they're married, whispered a woman in the back row. I never saw the like, not in this church, grumbled a man. From her usual seat, old Mizzy Evert just squinted at the strangers, apparently as confused as ever. Pastor Torgensen paused, smelling trouble. Another battle of the old and the new, he sighed to himself. Would it never end? Welcome he finally called out to the bedraggled sta strangers. We're glad you're here. Sit right down. But it was easier said than done. The young couple had to wind their way to the front to find the only vacant seats. A few hundred curious eyes watched. Now, as I was saying, the young preacher continued, he Hebrews 13.2. He cleared his throat. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing some have people have entertained angels without knowing it. He gulped, surprised at the verse's sudden aptness. Uh, well, uh, perhaps you've read stories about Chris Christmas visitations by angels. Many have been written, most of them pure fiction. But let's remember tonight that our Lord himself was not recognized for whom he was. And let's make sure there's room at our inn tonight. A nod to the choir, and he sat down by the pulpit. The music billowed behind him. He tried not to stare at the young couple, but couldn't help it. Who were they, and why were they here? All at once it hit him. On Christmas Eve... A bearded young man and a pregnant young woman seeking shelter. Did they have a donkey parked outside too? He smiled to himself. Entertained angels without knowing it. Well, one never knew. The choir's last Gloria and Excelsius Deo faded, and the pastor jumped to his feet. He had an idea. In our bulletin, the order of service calls next for a pastoral prayer. But before I lead us, let's find out what we have to pray about on this Christmas Eve. Jack, he motioned to an usher, if you'll get the movable microphone, we can have a brief time of sharing our needs. Again, the pastor tried not to gaze at the young strangers, but hoped they'd share their obvious needs. After all, this was a unique chance for the church to show hospitality, he thought. Just a brief time, he repeated, unconsciously nodding at old Mizzy Everett in the back. Poor Mizzy. They called her. She loved sharing times. 
at the first click of the microphone, she'd jump up as quickly as her arthritis allowed, only to ramble on and on about some long-forgotten event or person. The whole congregation would look at the floor embarrassed as Mizzy tried to remember a Bible verse or sing a song in her rusty squeal of a voice. It was starting to put a damper on services, some people said. The pastor's hopes rose as the bearded young man started to get up to his feet, but Mizzy was up first and she took the microphone from the reluctant usher. An almost audible groan went up from the congregation. Ah, uh, thank you, Mizzy, the pastor said after a minute of the old woman's rambling, but she droned on. I wish she'd take a hint, the pastor thought. Poor old Mizzy. Her mind's starting to go, and she still pedals at that three-wheeled bicycle all over town, making a spectacle of herself. Even the older members shook their heads about it. Finally, she surrendered the microphone. We'll be sure to pray about that, Mizzy, the pastor said, and then looked at the young couple. This time, the skinny fellow made it all the way to his feet. Uh, uh, I don't know anything about talking in church, he began shakily, but my old lady... He indicated at the girl at his side. I, I, I mean, my wife and I really need a place to stay tonight. We, we saw the lights and we came in. The pastor watched the young man speak, touched by his need. We're glad you did, the pastor said, and I'm sure we can find you a place to stay. By the way, what's your name? The young man looked away shyly. Uh, I'm Joe, he said, and this is Mary. A startled murmur was heard. Joseph and Mary? The pa pastor asked incredulously. Yeah, yeah I, I know how it sounds, the young man said, growing red-faced, but it, it's true, really. The pastor couldn't hold back a chuckle of wonderment. Indeed it is, he said, and quoted Hebrews 13, 2 again. Inspired, he thanked the young man and prayed fervently for the couple's needs. The families gathered here in the war-weary war world's longing for peace on earth. There was no doubt about it. The choir sounded sweeter than ever that night. The ancient story from Luke was never better read, nor more poignant. Even the atmosphere seemed rare, closer to heaven, with the young couple sitting there in the front. When the time had come for the benediction... Pastor Torgensen looked out on the Christmas Eve faces and spoke from the heart. Let there be room in our inn tonight, he said. Let us reach out to the Lord of Christmas and to one another. We may be different, but because he came, we can be one. Downstairs, where the church ladies had prepared punch, coffee, and cookies, the congregation streamed in for a bit of fellowship. The pastor and his wife brought cups of coffee to the young man and woman, only to discover that several parishioners had already done the same. We, we'd be happy to have you stay at our house tonight, Joe and Mary, volunteered a middle-aged couple. We, we were going to say the same thing, said two others. A group of high schoolers brought cookies and punch to the strangers. Pastor Torgensen, smiling broadly, broadly, hugged his wife. Over in the corner, by the coffee percolator, Old Mizzy Everett sat alone, with both hands around a cup of punch. <clears throat> she squinted at the sea of people, seemingly confused by the noise. Suddenly, she put down her punch and looked at her watch. As if on schedule, she picked up her purse and made her way to the door along the crowd's edge. Nobody noticed her leave. The night was cold. Setting her jaw determinedly, Mizzy struggled against her arthritis to mount her three-wheel bicycle. So frail, these mortal bodies, she thought, dumping her purse in the bike's basket. Her legs strained, pumping the pedals. Ice puddles cracked under her wheels all the way out of town. The city limit sign flashed past. Wheezing, she knew she could go no further. Finally, she slowed and parked by the side of the road. The highway was deserted. Only the stars and heaven watched as she climbed the sloping field by the road, her breath coming in hoarse gasps. A dog barked in the distance. Christmas Eve, she thought, looking at the sky. Just like that first Christmas Eve. 
when she had sung with the others. Oh, but that had been easy compared with this assignment. This time she'd had to take on a body for such a long time. Not like the Sodom and Gomorrah visit or the rest. She stretched and felt a pain. It was good to be going home. Smiling, she closed her eyes and reached heavenward. Slowly the creases in her face vanished and the twisted hands unfurled. Going home, she thought. Brighter and brighter her face glowed. Her old coat transformed into a robe the color of the sun. It was an angel's robe. At last, she thought, at last. There was a silent flash in the night and Mizzy Everett was gone. Hmm, what'd you think of that story? Sure makes you think, doesn't it? Well, I hope you have a great evening. Like I said, I'm going to go watch a Christmas movie now, and I hope that you have a really good evening and that you pay attention to all the opportunities that God gives us. Don't let our humanness blind us to the opportunities that are there. Anyways, Merry Christmas. Miss Kim loves you. Bye-bye.